Today's video sponsor is Rios Nautical Eyewear, the industry's leader in floating sunglasses. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Click this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, we're going out to do a pool liner repair. We have to go out and find a leak in a pool and try to repair it for them. Anytime we do jobs like this, we get these little repair kits here and I've showed you in the past how to use them and how simple they are to use it. But I don't think I really talked about how we find leaks and there are several different ways that we find leaks. Typically, we're gonna look in these seamed areas where the two seams are glued together and we're gonna just look for a leak. And how do we do that? Well, there's several ways. One, we can do the flap test where you just take your thumb or your finger and you kind of flap up the seam there and see if it's flapping. If it is, we simply glue the seam back down or we'll do a press test. A press test works great for the bottom of the liner pool, and that's where we're just kind of pressing on the bottom, and we feel, if we feel anything like really heavy, sharp rocks, or if we feel like the ground has given out, that typically means there's a leak in the bottom of the pool, and of course, it's gonna erode the bottom soil layer there away, and it's gonna get really mushy and really soft on the bottom of the pool. And you're not gonna have that hard, packed sand feeling. The last method that we typically use, of course, is the syringe test. And with the syringe test, we just take an empty syringe and we fill it up full of food coloring and we'll swim around in certain areas around light fixtures and things like that where we're squirting out the food coloring. And basically we're looking to see if that food coloring gets sucked through the liner. Typically, this is called a differential pressure, and that, of course, that tells us that there's definitely a leak there. So we're gonna be doing a lot of these today, but we're primarily gonna tr be trying to find the leak for her. She thinks it's in the bottom of her liner because she says that the ground is getting really mushy, and she tends to believe that the ground is washing away. That means she's got a lot of erosion, and that's usually a pretty good indication that you got a leak in the bottom of the pool. Hopefully, it's gonna be something simple that we can fix for her. If not, she may need to get a new liner for her pool, and she may need to even remove the pool out of the area so that she can uh, fix the soil up underneath it, get that erosion out of there, and then of course, get her pool reinstalled for her. But we're gonna head down the road here, and we're gonna see if we can get it fixed for her. The lining is a few years old, probably like three. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is held real good over here. Yeah, that, ro that, that rock's gonna poke gonna through. A, yeah, that's gonna be a problem. Very soon that rock will pop through. Yeah. And I don't know if there's one over there coming in, but maybe you can kind of check it out. Um, you know, it, it's just inevitable that it's just, it's, you know, we can't, if we can kind of prevent something from happening and. Yeah, and that, together. that indention over there at the ladder has really yeah, got me concerned. From... And especially with all the water that's up under here. And I can't, you know, there is a shut-off valve under there, and I can't, I can't get it to shut off. It's so tight. Somebody, when they put it on. Reached it down. They stay just, yeah. I can't get it undone. Let's see if I can crawl under here. Good little pad that you can use. Look and see if there's any bubbling coming up. I'm not seeing any. But I can see over here where the ground's eroding. See on the left, your pool's all the way in the ground. On the right, the pool's all the way in the ground. But right here in the corner, you can see where the erosion's. So yeah, that's that's where your pool is leaking. Right there, right where that indention is. 
All right, guys, I'm going to kind of walk you through what we're doing here. I'm fixing to get in the pool. You'll notice I'm not wearing any type of boots or even fins. Typically, when I work on liner pools like this, I want to eliminate any and all equipment that can actually cause more damage. And, and to be honest, I'm in three foot of water. I don't really need fins for this, and I definitely don't want to be wearing my boots because I wear the hard bottom boots, and they can cause holes in them as well. So what I'm looking for in the beginning, I'm just kind of doing an inspection of each little area here. I'm looking for holes, looking for cracks, and I'm going to inspect every uh, seam that's in this pool and see if I can find out uh, where the hole is. Now, typically, if I was doing this, I would use some type of syringe with a little bit of food coloring, but since the pool has a bunch of indentions in it, I kind of got a pretty good idea of where the holes are, so I'm not going to be using that method. One thing I'm doing here is just kind of pulling on the seams just to see how well they're glued down. And I'm also pushing on the bottom of the pool as well. And what that's going to allow me to do is to see if it's soft up underneath. Where these indentions are, if the water is actually going through the way I think it is, it should be very soft to the touch, almost kind of mushy. It's not going to be like a hard like sand feel. It's going to be really mushy. And I'm just going to keep working my way all the way around and then kind of make a note of all the holes that I noticed uh, in the liner itself. And here you can already see one of the major holes here. It's right there, right where the seam is, and it's actually large enough I can stick my finger all the way through it. And I can actually feel the differential pressure there. I can feel it with my finger, the suction as the water's coming through. Um, and according to the homeowner here, she has been pumping water for several days now, and it hasn't really changed the water level. And that kind of makes sense if she's pumping it in as fast as it's going out. Um, then, of course, she's not going to see any difference there as far as the water coming out. Here you can see the patches from the last time I was here. They're actually held in pretty well. Um, and those patches were actually clear last time I was here. And that's uh, as the, the glue or the sealant cures, it turns that, that white chalky color. So as you can see, those have completely cured over the last few years. But I've kind of walked all the way around or went all the way around the pool here and inspected. And I'm going to go ahead and come up here in just a minute and I'm going to go ahead and start cutting patches. And I'll kind of show you how I do that. When we patch pools here, uh, typically I will double patch. So I'll cut a smaller patch for the hole itself and then I'll cut a larger patch to kind of protect it and kind of go around. But the pool kits that I'm using, they just come from the local hardware store here. You can pretty much use any of them. As long as it's designed for uh, vinyl repair, um, then it's going to work fine. But I'm going to go ahead and get the backing paper off here and I'm just going to start patching away. First thing I'm going to do, of course, is cut a small little patch out. And I want to make sure that I get the corners rounded because I don't want any sharp corners where a person's foot or, you know, a pool toys toy or even say a vacuum can can kind of pull up on the patch on around all all the corners uh, before I stick the patch in here I'm just going to apply a little bit of cement or a little bit of glue there and I want to squeeze it around and get that entire patch covered with it and I also want to get all the air out as well um, you'll notice that when I go to put the patches on I'm going to push in and squeeze all the patches once I get underwater of course I'm going to open the patch up just at the whole area to eliminate as much air as possible from getting in and of course, once I have the patch over the hole, I can kind of smooth it out. There you can see I still had a little bit of air left in that patch, but I can kind of smooth it out there, get all the air bubbles out, make sure that glue is evenly dispersed on the patch, and of course, give it just a few seconds there to cure. And then of course, I'm gonna go ahead and cut another patch as well to go over the top of that. Once again, once I got it cut to size, I'm gonna go ahead and round off the corners, and then of course, get it glued in there, and get all the air out. Once again, I'll take it under. I'm going to place this one directly over the top of the previous patch that I just did and just make sure all the air is out. All the air is out. I'm going to really smooth everything out as well because by doing that, I make sure I have a good waterproof tight seal and I also make sure there's no snag hazards because if there's a snag hazard, you can't really get hurt with these patches, but you can rip the patch off and kind of uh, defeat the purpose of having a patch there. Now, this is actually going to take me quite a while to do because I think in total I've got about 12 holes that I have to patch and I've advised the homeowner as well that she she might as well go ahead and plan on getting a new liner by the end of the swim season here um, because I've already patched multiple 
holes in the past for her, and now she's got 12 more. And with the erosion up underneath the pool, it's going to have to be replaced one way or the other. They're going to have to get up underneath this pool and actually start grading as well. And so to do that, the only way to do it, of course, is drain the water, remove the liner, get in there, fill it in with sand, grade it down. And then of course replace the liner but i'm just going to continue on here because she's wanting to get by until the end of swim swim season for this year and then she said that of course she would try to replace it but once again same thing cut a patch cut the corners and round them off go ahead and fill it full of glue and i'm just going to uh, squish the glue around to make sure it's evenly dispersed and get all the air bubbles out as possible and then of course i'll put it down get it into position open it up and then of course uh, patch over the hole now what i'm actually doing here is i'm covering little tiny microscopic holes where the rocks are st sticking up through so as the land erodes up underneath the pool it's, it's taking those rocks and kind of pushing them up so i'm going to be patching over them with two or three patches but i'm going to take a quick minute here for our sponsor here and let you guys know what i think whether you're out on the beach or you're fishing into your local lake, Rios Nautical Eyewear is going to have you covered with the best floating sunglasses on the market. Lenses are clearer than glass, they are very lightweight, made of nylon, oh and yeah, they float too. Rios Nautical Eyewear, the industry's leader in floating sunglasses. So I'm going to get back at it now. Here you can see I'm patching over another hole and I'm actually going to speed the footage up a little bit for you because it does get kind of boring here. But basically all I'm doing is swimming around. I'll find a hole and measure it. And then of course I'm going to cut a patch to fit and we typically cut it just a little bit larger than what we need. I'm going to go ahead and round off the edges there and what that does is uh, eliminate any snag hazards. And then of course I'll add a little bit of glue and stick her down and just glue her down. The patches I'm using here already have an adhesive on them. So the cool thing about those is I don't have to add any type of um, glue or any type of cement to it. But once again, just swim down, find a hole, cut a patch, stick it on, and repeat. And I think grand total we did about 12 patches on this pool uh, it's probably the most i've ever done on a pool at one time and i've explained to the homeowner here she's got to have a new liner there there's no way around that um, because there's just so many holes there she's got too much erosion underneath there's too many rocks that are actually sticking up through the liner so she's definitely going to have to have a new liner hopefully these patches will get her by until the end of uh, the swim season or the summer season which is typically right after labor day but uh yeah she had quite a few leaks and so i'm just going to continue to swim along here this is something that just about any diver can do divers if you're new to scuba diving and you want to make a little bit extra cash maybe make enough to get your tanks filled on the weekends or whatnot get out there and do this this is pretty easy go by your local hardware store pick you up a couple of vinyl kits and get out there and promote in your community it's very very easy to do i used to do this as a teenager and actually made quite a bit of money as a teenager doing exactly what you're seeing me do here this little spot here actually gave me quite a bit of trouble too because that rock was actually protruding up to the top and it was kind of a pain in the butt but i'm gonna get finished up here and of course i will give you some final thoughts at the end Alright guys, so I just got finished up. I think I put a total of 12 patches in her pool today. Um, I've advised her that she is going to need a new liner. There's no way around that. And she understands that. Hopefully these patches will get her along until the Labor Day holiday weekend. And then of course she can get her pool shut down and get a new liner in it. She's also going to need um, some type of grading done up underneath her pool. There's just way too many rocks sticking up through it. But, um, and I, I kind of showed her that. I showed her on the footage that I got today and I showed her as we walked around the pool. Um, but, and she understands that and she's very pleased with the work I've done today. So she's happy, I'm happy. It's been a good day. But guys, if you got any questions on pool repair, things like this, put it down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer it. This is something you guys can do. You don't necessarily have to be trained in how to put a sticker, if you will, on a, on a piece of vinyl to repair it. This is very easy work. If you're a young diver out there, maybe you're a teenager looking for a little bit of side work and you're a scuba
scuba diver, hey, this is gonna be great for you. This is what I did when I was a teenager and made pretty good money as a teenager doing it. But guys, I wanna thank our sponsor again, Rios Nautical Eyewear. Anytime you're around water, losing stuff in the water is gonna be a scare that a lot of people have. And you don't wanna be scared that you're gonna lose your glasses. And with Rios Nautical Eyewear, guys, they float. These glasses are phenomenal. They're very lightweight. The lenses are clearer than glass. I mean, I love them, guys. I can't speak highly enough at them. They sit, saw us out, not the other way around. They sent me a pair to initially try, and I fell in love with them the first time I put them on. If you're interested in your own Rio's Nautical Eyewear sunglasses, check out the link below. It'll take you straight to our online store, and you can pick out whatever style and whatever color that you want. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us up on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.